Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at and experiencing the difference between modern bikes, vintage bikes, and antique bikes. Let's check it out. Now looking at these three different types of bikes, the three main things we're going to be looking at are the contact points on the bikes, the gearing on the bikes, and the weight on the bikes. So for our modern bike in the comparison, we're going to be using my carbon fiber Calfi Tetra Pro. The Tetra Pro has been around a long time, but it's still manufactured today, and I think it has some of the finest attributes of a modern road bike, even though it was designed originally way back in the late 80s and early 90s. My Calfi Tetra Pro, which weighs in at a respectable 18 pounds, and has a rather old but very functional and I think a high watermark group, the Dura Ace 9 speed group. Let's talk about contact points on a modern bike. Now your hands are going to be going on a handlebar that is probably very well padded and comfortable. Your saddle is going to be low profile, low contact, and probably just your sit bones are going to be touching. That's probably ideal. And your pedals are going to be clip in, lightweight, and your stiff sole shoe is going to be transferring power very effectively. It goes without saying that modern bikes have a lot of gear options. You can go 12 speed, 11 speed. This is a nine speed because it's the old Dura-Ace group. Uh, there's one by. You have many, many different choices of things you can do on a bike. All three of the bikes we're looking at today have a racing heritage and here we see Greg LeMond on his Calfi, then called Carbon Frames, racing in the 1991 Tour de France. Dave Scott came in second place in the 1994 Hawaiian Ironman Triathlon, also riding a Calfi. When I ride a modern bike, I expect the bike to be better than I am. That is, if anything's holding me back while riding, it's me and not the bike. I've had this Calfi up Mount Diablo, Mount Hamilton, and Mount Amunum, and it's climbed and descended admirably. I've taken it on quite a few century rides, and it's turned out to be a great all-around bike. By the way, in case some of you are wondering why my modern bike has rim brakes and a mechanical group, that's just what I prefer on road bikes. Why I prefer them is probably a great topic for another video. Okay, let's travel back in time about 60 years to this vintage Frages bike which was manufactured sometime in the early 60s. This is a Frages Super Corsa and it weighs in at 25 pounds which is a lot heavier than the Calfi but you really don't feel the weight that much on the ride. You feel when you lift it up, boy this feels like it weighs a ton. But on the ride it takes about 20 miles for my legs to really start feeling that extra added weight but you will feel it eventually. Uh, let's talk about contact points. These old vintage handlebars wrapped with this cotton tape, very skinny, very hard. Hurt your hands after a while, hence these old vintage gloves that have lots and lots of padding. Comes in very handy. So instead of having the padding on your bars, you have it on your gloves. Okay, the saddle. This is a leather saddle made by Brooks which is a very famous maker, and these types of saddles have been popular for over a hundred years on all kinds of bikes, and people still put them on their modern bikes now and prefer them to some of the modern saddles. Depends on who you talk to. I find it very comfortable. There's a lot more surface area that touches, but still on long rides, I have no problem with the old Leather Brooks saddle. Pedals, the third contact point. No longer do we clip in, now we have toe clips which some people absolutely hate. But again, I really don't mind the toe clips. It's kind of charming. And one thing I wanted to mention on these vintage bikes also, the shifting, instead of brifters or push button electronic shifting, we have the, the down tube shifters and 
Some people just despise down tube shifters. I just get used to it and I ride it. I don't have any problem with it. Uh, the gearing, the gearing, uh, we go back. We have less gearing options on these older bikes. This used to be a five speed. I converted it to six speed by spreading the back. So we've got effectively 12 speeds and I, I've got a 28 in the back. I don't have any problem with this. Uh, it's more of a weight thing climbing hills than it is a gearing thing. Uh, I don't have a compact crank on this, so that's another issue. But gearing still really isn't a problem. There's still plenty of gearing choices to be had. And if you wanted to, there are plenty of cheats to put compact cranks on these. And if you wanted to, you can put totally modern components on these older bikes. Frazier's bikes were respected racers in their time. Many a world championship was won on a Frazier's in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, with many famous riders like Omo, Cinelli, and Bartali riding them. Ferdy Kubler won the 1950 Tour de France atop a Frasius bike. We have to be a little careful here when using the word vintage. A bike from the 60s and a bike from the 80s might both be called vintage, but things changed a lot in those 20 years. I have a bike from 1985 that you could put new components on and you wouldn't know you were riding an old bike. This Frasius from the 60s isn't like that. The frame is on the heavy side and the universal brakes work well enough but are not spectacular. After long rides you can really feel the vintage aspect of the bike. I don't have any problems with a 60 miler on this guy, but I've never tried a century on this bike. It would make another interesting video I think. I would also be hesitant to take this up a major mountain like Diablo. It's not that I don't think I could make it, but all that extra weight and lack of low gearing would certainly make things more uncomfortable. And then there's the issue with descending a big mountain with brakes that would require more attention and strength to keep the bike under control. My hands are hurting just thinking about it. Still, I love riding this bike. Now we go back another 40 years as we check out this Claude Delage bicycle which was made around 1918 to 1921 and it weighs in at a hefty 33 pounds and you feel that 33 pounds and you feel it when you're riding. Contact point, handlebars, I have no padding on these handlebars and in the photos I've studied of the time period they didn't either, it was just bare metal, they would sometimes put some wrapping, some linen or cloth wrapping up the handlebars up to where the brakes were, but they would never put anything up here. Or they would have these wooden handles, which I can tell you are not very comfortable. They're just hard wood. So they really roughed it. And they didn't wear gloves. I didn't see any gloves in those photographs. Interesting. Saddle. I've got an old Brooks leather saddle on here. I have the original saddle for the bike, but it was in too rough a condition. It was very similar to this, but it was a little more elongated. But again, as we talked about in the last bike, a lot of contact points, but still very comfortable. I have no problem with these saddles. Pedals. These are the pedals that came with the bike, and they're just rat trap pedals. They have no clips. They don't hold your feet in place. But the racers of the time did use toe clips and straps to hold their feet in place. This bike just doesn't have those. Gearing. Now on these old bikes, you didn't have much of a choice when it came to gearing. There was one gear. As you can see, no front derailleur, no rear derailleur. One gear in the back. If you were lucky, you could flip your wheel around and you had another gear on the other side. It was called a flip-flop. No front derailleur, so you have one chain ring in the front. So this is what it is. And you're gonna ride it. And they rode these in things in the Alps. They rode them in hard stages in the Tour de France like this. Crazy stuff. Here we see an image of the Claude Delage booth in the 1921 Paris Automobile Show. This was the golden age for Delage. Racers atop Delage bikes had been winning races in France for years, notably the Delage Continental Team, but in 1921, riders on Delage bicycles won 11 of the 15 stages of that year's Tour de France. The team was led by Victor Lanaires who came in 6th place in 1921 and 5th place in 1922. Here he is on his Delage bike riding a stage in the Alps. 
To be fair, I don't have much mileage on this bike yet, so my impressions might change with time, but this bike really makes me appreciate how far bicycles have come. I can't fathom racing this bike or climbing massive mountains like Lennar's did. I can barely get up a moderate hill with this one gear available to me. A century ride? Wow, tough to imagine. I'm hoping to get used to the brakes, which really are horrible. The pads touch virtually no surface area on the rims and have little to no stopping power, which would come in handy when your bike weighs as much as this one. On the plus side, it is comfortable and has a very smooth ride. The slack geometry makes the steering feel a little like tiller steering, but the bike handles fairly well and the beauty of the thing is off the charts. The graceful sweeping deco fork is probably the most beautiful I've seen. Let's hope it holds up for another hundred years. Thanks very much for coming along with us everyone as we took a look at the differences between a modern, a vintage, and an antique bicycle. We hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next time. Bye bye.